You're listening to the Generational Wealth Through Commercial Real Estate Podcast. Your host, Will Smith, is a former NFL player that found his passion in commercial real estate. Every week, you will learn from industry experts everything you need to know to get started investing in commercial real estate to build generational wealth. Thank you for tuning in to the Generational Wealth Through Commercial Real Estate Show. Got a very special guest lined up for you today. But before we get into that, if you're watching this for the first time, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And if you've been watching this show for some time now and for whatever reason you haven't left a review, go ahead and leave me a review. These reviews are how I keep bringing on rock star guests like I have today. All right, housekeeping is out of the way. So today's guest is Stace, and I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name because I'm going to butcher it. Um, but Stace is the founder of Trust Deep Branding Agency, an award winning writer and branding expert with 20 years of experience. He focuses on creating long-term loyalty between businesses and individuals built on deep trust. He's created com communication content and strategy for brands like Realty Mogul, Foles, uh, Delta Airlines. I mean, the, the, the list goes on. He's uh, been buying and selling investment real estate for more than 20 years, and he's currently doing it passively and active. So, Stace, man, I appreciate you coming on the show today, man. How are you? I'm great. It's, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Yeah. Um, if I just give you a little bit of background on, on like what you said there about the, the, the real estate investing. So, I've been in investing for a little bit more than 20 years, and it started with just um, single-family homes. And that was like as much as I felt comfortable uh, taking on. And then, yeah. um, the past two years I bought a small apartment building outside of Boston here where I live. And, uh, and now I'm, I'm looking to scale up and, and do bigger things with, with, uh, with more experienced, um, syndicators or, or, or people who know who, who can guide me. And I've also started investing passively, um, in the Southeast. Um, it's, it's hard to invest here in, in the Northeast, yeah. but you know, yeah. the prices of, of property is just, uh, it's, it's through the roof. Oh yeah, man. It's, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I personally cannot go invest up there. So yeah. all, all the power to those, the people that's making it happen, but it's not for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you mean, tell us, man, how did you, I want to talk about the branding side first? Um, sure. you know, how did you decide that to start that agency and, and, um, you know, where is it, where is it today? Right. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I've worked in advertising for more than 20 years. Um, and for the most part, I worked for large agencies and we had clients like Delta Airlines or Heineken or Cadillac, big, big companies, you know, like brands that you, you know and you see every day. Um, but in the past five years, I've been looking to change how I approach what we do. And I, and I wanted to, to come up with an, an approach that would allow me to create real relationships between brands and businesses and, and customers. Um, and I was, I found I wasn't able to do that working with those large companies or the large adver advertising agencies. So I started yeah. my own brand and uh, excuse me, my own branding agency. And I'm able now to work with entrepreneurs, real estate investors, startups, and work directly with the founder of a company and help identify the thing that makes them different from everybody else who's doing the same thing that they're doing. Right. And finding ways to position them. Um, so a lot of the work we do is with real estate guys, investors, syndicators, land developers, things like that. And um, we also work with people outside of real estate. Um, um, we have an accounting firm, um, a, an insurance broker. We, we have a, a wide range of, uh, of, of clients. But the thing we focus on with all of them is helping them build long-term relationships based on trust. So our agency name is Trust Deep. We build like trust deep relationships that's built on the most solid foundation there is because that's what's going to make people loyal to you. And um, you don't just create customers, you create customers for life. Right, right, right. Now that's, um, that's very good, man. And just from, um, you know, a syndicator, somebody that's listening to the show, you know, may, maybe they're thinking about getting into the um, investing side and they, they want to get out there and start raising money so they can start doing their own deals. You know, they don't really have a track record, so to speak. So what, what, you know, what advice could you give that listener so they can, you know, go out here and start, you know, building their brand? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's a good question. So you can't have, you can't have an investment company without investors, right? And you can't have any business without customers. Right. If you don't have revenue, if you don't have people who, who believe in the, the product or service that you're, you're, you're selling, 
you're not a business. Right. So what we recommend is first of all, finding a way to stand out. So no matter what you're doing. So if you're a house flipper, if you're um, a land developer, you're a syndicator, you're a broker, there are so many people who are doing what you're doing right now. And um, you have to find a way to stand out. Like I guarantee you that the people who are going to start their first syndication are going to go to their friends and family first. And those people know them the best. And those people yeah. will probably invest with them. Right. But what happens when you run out of <laughs> friends and family or you want to scale bigger, right? Yeah. You need, you need to attract more investors and you need to come off as credible. Like you said, you said track record, right? So um, we, we see there, there being four elements to creating trust and credibility, track record, empathy with your ability to be human. And the last one is alignment of interest. Those yeah. things have to be the foundation of your brand. So we, we recommend going through the branding process and a brand is not just a logo or a website brand yeah. is like the essence of what you stand for. That's, that's at the, the, the foundation of what your, your company should be about. It should guide all your decisions, the types of deals you get involved in, the people who you're, you partner with, the types of vendors that you have. You will end up attracting the um, types of investors who have a similar mindset and goals to you if you're able to articulate that clearly. If you, but first, you have to discover what your, yeah. your brand is. You've got to define it, and then you've got to go out and, and spread the word. Right, right. Now, I, I want to unpack this, man. And I, I got my, my notepad and pen ready because uh, this is some good stuff here. I feel like I should be paying you for this information you're about to share us, man. <laughs> they send a check. So then... <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. All right. So um, let's talk about really identifying, you know, what your brand is. Like, how do you decide, okay, this is the image I want to portray. This is how I want to set myself apart from the rest of the competition. You know, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. It's so it is a process. And so like we work with people um, and they'll say that they'll ask that question. So how do we get there? And I'm thinking the answer's already there. It's within you some, some, like somewhere in there. Yeah. The, the trick is getting it out, like discover it and getting it out and like being able to um, put it into terms that it relates to us uh, so that people can relate to it. So you think about a brand as this, it's like the thing you do better than anybody else, the need that people have, that intersection, that's your brand. Yeah. So you need to um, figure out like those things that matter to you and that will also matter to other people and help solve a need they have. So um, we, we work with people and we, so we'll ask them, first of all, like, what are your goals? What are your objectives? What are your, what's your mission? And how do you see life a little bit differently? Or how do you see business a little bit differently than somebody else? Like, what are the things that matter to you? What are your values? Yeah. Values are ultimately the thing that drive you. And like, you know, so we're talking about like syndicators, for instance, and they say, oh, I'm, I, I'm a, I have integrity. Well, everybody right. has integrity. What does that right. mean to you? How do you show integrity? How do you live with integrity? How do you invest with integrity? And like, oh, okay, I, I have integrity because I do X, Y, and Z. Like, okay, let's dig, let's dig a little deeper. That's what we do with the process. And we get to something, a positioning that helps us differentiate you from what other people are doing because everybody's going to say that they're honest they're trustworthy they're they have integrity they they care about this they care about that yeah you got to find the thing that makes you different and like if we look in, in in life like you know step outside of real estate for a second if you look at like like automotive brands or clothing brands or you know entertainment brands or technology brands you see brands and the, the ones that like really stand out they stand for something and they're are, they're focused on that. There's no doubt about it. Like Nike, for instance, Nike's not a shoe company. Nike believes that they can turn me into a champion. They believe right. that I'm an athlete, even though I don't, you know what I mean? They believe <laughs> right. in me. That's Nike's brand. We don't buy them because of the, 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 the logo. The, like, yeah. we, we believe in the brand. And that's what we, we help um, entrepreneurs do is find the thing that, th that they believe in and that other people can um, find meaning in. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's good, man. So, it's not so much of uh, let me copy what this person is doing because they're having success. Like you can't build a brand trying to be a copycat, right? You, you could, but it doesn't last for, it can't last forever. Because the, the thing is, is that people are going to want to connect with you one-on-one uh, -on -one or authentically. Right. So like right now we can't, we can't meet all the people we, who we might want to invest with or the people that we want to be our investors, but we're going to yeah. find them on social media. We're going to find them on, on podcasts like this. We're going to see them in blogs. We're going to see them on their website. We might see them on a show. We might see them in a meetup giving a talk. Yeah. If you borrowed somebody else's brand, 
it's it, it's not going to work with you. It just eventually will not work. I mean, so like right. authenticity builds trust. Trust builds a good brand. But like, so you can you can borrow elements from somebody, and you might have things that naturally line up with what somebody else is doing. Yeah. But you have to make it your own. I mean, why would some? Why does somebody want the imitation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you know, that's that's that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, now, what was those three pillars again? I want to make sure I got them down right. Oh, the, the four pillars of trust are four. credibility, yeah. track record, empathy, and alignment of interests. Alignment of interests are like your motivations or your intentions. Yep. You want, yeah. want me to break those down? Yeah, break them down, man. Yeah. So credibility is, um, well, first, let me just back up a second. So people say that trust takes a long time to create, and I don't right. believe it does. There's only one element takes a long time, but like the first one credibility can happen instantly. When I meet you, I shake your hand and we're talking about a real estate deal. If you show me with the words you use and the message that you, that you, that you give off, if you show me that you know what you're talking about, that's credibility. Like, so if you, if you're talking about the deal in, in ways that sound intelligent and you, you've, you've done the numbers and, and you know, the market and you know, the lingo that's credibility. So that can happen like in an instant, but like sometimes we talk to people who, you, you know, um, may not have an idea of like, someone's like, Oh, I want to become a syndicator. Like, Oh, should I right. give you some money? Yeah. Because I've, I've, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've got some single family homes. Like, Oh, well, you know what? That's, you don't got right. credibility there because you're not talking about the thing we need to, that, that I want to talk about in, in terms that let me know that you've got some intelligence on the subject. Right. Right. That's, now, that's credibility. Okay. Now let me, let me, uh, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. So on the credibility side, um, back to the guy that's just really wanting to get into it. Cause everybody wants to be a syndicator right now. I mean, everybody's yeah. talking about making money. Me too. Um, <laughs> right. So if they don't have the actual experience and say, look, man, I've done 10 deals and this is the kind of returns my investors, you know, has uh, received, you know, you really can't push that side of it. what you're really pushing at that angle is, Hey, my partners, you know, have done X, Y, and Z, right. Is that correct? Yeah. So that's actually, so that's the second, the, the second pillar that's, that's track record and you can't fake track record. Track record takes a long time. What track record is, is like you believing that the things I've done in the past, the positive outcomes I've made happen will again happen in the future. Yeah. And if you've never done a syndication before, the truth is you just, you don't have track record, right. but you, you can borrow some of the track record of your partners. Um, you can, you can use some of the, the, the elements of your life outside of real estate. Like, so even though I've never done a syndication before, well, I've had a job yeah. for 20 years, right? So right. You, can, you can talk to people I've worked for or people I've worked with, you know, I've got family, you know, like, so you look on LinkedIn and you're like, okay, this guy has a, a community of people who, who respect him and trust him. Right. So that adds a little bit of track record, but if you don't have track record in the specific thing and you can't borrow it from a, um, like a GP who's, who's working with you on something. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to take time to, to, to build. Yeah. Yeah. You may have to just start smaller in that scenario and, and, right. and, and do it that way. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that either. No. All right. Now empathy, let's, let's talk about that. How did, how did that play into the factor? So empathy is like this human factor, right? It's your ability to relate to other people and have them relate to you. So, um, a lot of people in business will dismiss empathy. They'll say, you know, this is a soft skill. It's not something that like really matters in, in business. And the, the truth is empathy is the quick, empathy is the most powerful way to build trust quickly. So, and the easy thing about empathy is that you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is listen to people. Um, right. That's how you start to, to, to gain somebody's trust is listening to them. So what you're doing there is you're validating their words, you're validating them as a person. And yeah. we forget how powerful that can be just to listen. And I think like so many problems in our world could be uh, eliminated or reduced if we just listen to people. Like people disagreeing on, on things, it's like, let me just shut up and listen. By listening, right. it doesn't mean that I take your side of it. I'm agreeing to listen to you and, and say that what you think and what you feel is valid. It, 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 it has the right to exist in the world. Do I have to live it? No, but let's find right. a way for us to work. And the, you can't get to that point unless you listen. Yeah. Whether yeah. in business or anything else. Yeah. Gotcha. And then the last one, alignment of interest. So a alignment of interest is you having the same intentions and motivations as somebody else. And so let's say you're, you're dealing with a syndicator and um, his, his goal 
you guys can have the same goal. You guys, I want a, a 20% uh, ROI on this thing. And he's like, I want a 20% ROI on this too. And then you're like, yeah, but I want to do it legally and ethically. And he's like, well, we don't have to do everything ethically, but we can still get to 20%. And th- right. at that point, we don't have an alignment of interest. We might have right. the same goal, but we're not, gonna, we're not gonna get to that goal along the same path. So those four factors have to exist for trust to, yeah. to occur, but in different ratios. Like, so n- in not all situations do I need to have tons of credibility. In not all situations do I need to have tons of empathy. It fluctuates depending on the situation. So like, if I'm writing you a check for $100,000 for yeah. an investment, I'm going to need to know, like, first of all, your, your credibility and, you know, maybe our alignment of interest has to be really high. It also depends on me right. as a person. Like, we're all, we're all different. Seven billion unique people in the world, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Got you. Got you. All right. So I want to sum this up then. So the credibility side of it is for, for my listeners here is, number one, if you're talking about you want to syndicate deals, then learn the lingo, you know, do your research, do your due diligence on, you know, what is a syndication? What are the different syndication routes out there? If you're saying I want to go into multifamily, then, you know, understand cap rates, understand, you know, the cash on cash return, understand how to underwrite a property and how to, you know, not just talk the jargon of it, but to understand it. So when you talk to somebody, you can, you know, really tell them what you're saying or they can really understand what you're saying. Right. right. So that's the credibility side of it. Track record. If you don't have the track record, there's plenty of people out here that that's doing deals right now and they would love to have somebody else on their team that can bring capital to the table. Mm -hmm. So borrow their track record, you know, empathy, listen to what they're saying, not just hearing what they're saying and saying what you want to say, but really hearing what they are saying and then you'll respond accordingly. And then the last one, alignment of interest, just like you said, this is important. And I really want to just kind of pound on this for a second. Alignment of interest is important because you know, there's a lot of people out here that say, hey, man, let's partner, let's, let's partner, let's partner. But if their interests are misaligned, like uh, Stace just said, you know, they may do something uh, illegally and that's going to affect you because you're a partnership with them. So it's important to understand those things in the front end before you get too deep with somebody. Right. Yeah. Th- so the, the illegal thing that I mentioned, so, so that's like an extreme case, but there were going to yeah. be other things that happens. Like, it's like, you know, like, I want to, like, we want to raise rents X percent over a certain number of years and I want to do it this way. And you're thinking you want to do it a different way. Like right. it's just those things which are going to cause friction down the yeah. road. Right. I mean, like you, you don't need that in a business deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. You I mean, you, you got to be aligned, you know, if you want to grow, you know? Um, so that's, that's very important. Um, all right, man. So, you know, when, when you're talking about um, brand building, uh, what platforms, you know, do you think it's easiest to build your brand on? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a good point. It, it, it depends on your, your personality. So something that happens in real estate, and this is probably, probably more than most businesses or most categories is that the person become ends up coming, becoming the brand. So there's, there's a lot of personal preference that goes into it. So if we like, we talk about like shoes again, like if we talk about like the shoe company, uh, what the founder of that company is is comfortable with probably isn't as important because he's not going to be the face of the shoe company. Right. You know, there might be spokespeople or athletes or things like that. But if, if you're doing a syndication and you're going to make the syndication platform, people are going to want to hear from you directly, whether it's on a webinar or a podcast or whatever it is. And if you're writing like blog posts on your website, they assume it's you who's, who's writing right. those or it's in your voice or something like that. So right. it really depends like what is your, your, your comfort level and also like what are your goals so if your goal is to only have local investors well you probably might not need a podcast right like right. so if your goal is local investors then you have to be involved in your community so it might be like attending meetups or sponsoring meetups or creating your own meetup yeah. that might be a platform for you that's how you know um joe fairless got started i think he, yeah. he, he created his own uh, meetup to, to begin and then he's got the the podcast the books the whole empire right right um, right the, but there are elements that everybody's going to need. And those would be, you know, understanding your, your brand and having some brand documents that, that guide you having a website that you can direct people to, because like, everybody's going to want to say like, well, is this guy legit? Like, yeah. like w- what's he all about? Like, can I read a little bit about him? Does he have like past deals that I can see? And your website right. is like this, this thing that's always working for you 24 hours a day. And you got to drive people to it and you might drive them through like LinkedIn or, and that's how, that's how you and I got hooked up through, through yeah. LinkedIn. Um, it might be through other social media. I might see somebody on Instagram. I might see somebody on Facebook, but you're going to eventually drive someone back to your website. Right. 
that website has to like, I read a statistic. It's like you get 0 0.05 seconds to, to make a decision like on a yeah. website, like people roll into your site and they will decide instantly whether they trust you or not. And they're, they're, they're going to bail. So your website really needs to capture um, like what people are looking for and you need to repeat it back to them. That's part of the empathy thing because yeah. we don't always get to talk to people face to face. So empathy in that situation is knowing what people are looking for or knowing what my ideal customer is looking for. And then yeah. like showing that I understand that, like the second they come to my site, it's not just like, hey, welcome to my, my syndication. It's like, well, that's all about me. But what, yeah. what, is the, what are we saying to attract that investor? What are we saying so that they see what they want reflected there? Um, right. The website messaging is, is incredibly important. Like, do, like getting it right instantly. Yeah, yeah. And something I wanna just add to this, um, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but, um, is, you know, around your branding is, you know, number one, um, having everything look the same. Let's say you got a, a Facebook page, you got a, a LinkedIn page, you got an Instagram page. Does, you know, one site have all blue colors and another site have all red colors and it's just kind of, you know, fighting against each other. So that number one, your brand should kind of just, you should just look professional, especially if you're talking about raising, you know, millions of dollars, you want to look professional in everything you do. And then um, the next point on that is uh, I wanted to ask you, um, what's more powerful when building a brand? Um, I know we're talking about understanding the avatar and, you know, really speaking to what they want. Um, would you say video is more powerful than just standard images if you're talking about building a brand? Yeah, video is huge. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I probably should have mentioned that. But a video is, is, in, in, is incredibly important. And, and there's like this really simple reason for it. It's like, I get to see you. Yeah. And um, I don't just hear you. So like we started, let's, let's start at like one end, which is like a blog post. Or I, I right. wrote like a, a manual or a book or something. That's the yeah. written word. Yeah. And I'm not really getting your tone. I'm not really seeing what you're about. Yeah. Audio is sort of like the next step up. I can hear you and like, you, yeah. I can hear you laughing. I can hear you breathe. I mean, it's like, you're a real person. Right. Video brings that even closer. I mean, like ideally you'd want to be like sitting down face to face with somebody that, yeah. that doesn't always work and you can't you can't scale that right and it's and it's because like we make decisions um so we start to get into the science of decision making here but we yeah. make decisions like deep in our brain it's it's called the, the limbic system and yeah. that part of our brain um doesn't it can't understand language it, it, it like it, it's it's like the oldest part of our brain when we were like first i don't know developing as, as human beings it works on emotion so like words that I read, I'm gonna, my brain's gonna have to read those and then translate those into an emotion. But when I'm right. seeing you, I'm getting emotion and it, it helps me make a, a decision more quickly. Right. Um, video is huge. I mean, so like so, some podcasters will just do an audio podcast and some guys will do, you, you know, video too. And I think video gives you a chance to see that I'm a real person. You see, right. you see my face, you see me smile. I mean, like, like those things, are very important and we sometimes like we don't give them the credibility that they deserve we don't give them the the, the value that they deserve it's like yeah like i, I think it, it makes a huge difference in our connection with people yeah yeah no that's uh that, that makes a lot of sense man and um that's that's why i went with the you know the thought yeah. of doing video when i said well i'm already going to do video so i'm also convert this to audio so i can yeah. some people you know they just like listening to stuff um yeah. as they're you know going about their day so uh, that's why I went with that ideal as well. Um, you know, you said something else. There. I just want to come back to it. And it's, and it's very important. You were talking about consistency across platforms, right? So right. A, a, a visual look that's consistent across platforms. And, and the reason why it goes back to like the way our brains make decisions. So every time there's a choice or a decision for us, like our brain has to do this math, this mental right. math. And the brain looks for patterns so that it can make, so it doesn't have to make the same decision over and over again. When you have a consistent look and a consistent message, you help your, like your listener's brain create a pattern and they come to trust you just a little bit more each time because there's consistency. It works the same way with like friends of ours. Yeah. We have friends in our lives who we trust and we'll hang out with and spend time with because they are consistent. Like I know like my friends, you know, now that we're at this, this age in our lives, you have friends you've known for decades. Right. And like, there's a consistent pattern, the way they behave. And there are people who are less predictable and we not, might not be as close to them. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just, we don't have that same sense of, of trust with that person. But consistency is huge in your brand. 
Right, right. Now nah, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. And you know, obviously, I'm I'm a big guy, so I think about a food example. <laughs> you know, if if I'm going to McDonald's, I know this brand. I trust this brand. I know that if I get a Big Mac, it's going to be made the same way every yeah. single time because I just trust the brand. I, I trust that they are not going to change what they're doing because you know they're McDonald's. You know, mm -hmm. so it's the same thing with you as a as an operator syndicate. If you show the same message and you say the same message over and over and over again, at some point people are just going to see you as you know whatever you're, you're preaching. So that's um, right. No, that's that's good stuff. Yeah. It's not just the food. So you're going to get the same experience <laughs> for the most right. part. Yeah, no yeah. matter where you are, you're always going to, and that, that's the comfort. Like we, we right. get that pattern. We're like, I know what I'm going to get there. I'm not going to be surprised. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. Yeah. So it would almost, uh, well, I would look at it like this then. If somebody is brand new, right? And hey, man, I, I want to do what you're doing. That they really should go through this, this framework, this mindset of really understanding what they want their brand to be, but start with the end in mind. Hey, I want to be, you know, the next Grant Cardone or whoever it is they want to be, right? Start with that end image and then build our platforms out accordingly. Is that the best way to go about building your brand out? Yeah, you need that foundation. If we think about a building, so like think of, think of like building the brand as the, the, the concrete, the foundation. And then your marketing is going to be everything that's built on top of that. Not just your marketing, but your business plan too. So your brand doesn't just influence your communication. It should really influence how you hire employees, how you deal with those employees, how you, um, the deals you decide to go after. So get the brand, which is the foundation, and then everything yeah. gets built on top of that. That's the siding, the, the structure, the roof, the windows, right. all that goes on top. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, now let's talk about, you know, the consistency of our messaging, you know, um, or how often are we putting out messaging? Because you see guys like Gary Vee says, you know, post a hundred times a day, and, <laughs> you know, and, and those type of guys, you know, they, they, they want you to post all the time. But, you know, to some people that, that may be intimidating and, and to others, they may just say that's crazy. So, I mean, from a branding perspective, how often should we be getting in front of our target audience? It is, it's, it's hard to disagree with Gary, right? But um, yeah. I don't know how to do it. I, like, so I saw that same thing and I was like, but you know, he's going through the examples and I'm like, I don't know, maybe, maybe he's got more time than me. But, <laughs> right, right. But, um, but I, think, I think his point is we should be doing a lot more than what we think we, we should be doing. So like, I, so I put out content, I try to put out content five days a week and how many yeah. times a day I try to do, I aim for two times a day on LinkedIn. Yeah. And um, at first I think like, oh, that's, that's like way too much. Like people are going to get tired of hearing me. Right. And then I'm listening to Gary V talk and he's like, like the same people aren't going to see that stuff. And if your friends are getting tired of you, well, you know, your friends are going to like you either way, right. but you have the opportunity to um, get new people to come in and, and see your stuff, get in front of more people. And that's how, you, that's how you grow. So I would say, and I, I don't even take this advice myself because it's, it's hard. I would say you yeah. need to be posting like, I'd say like five times a day and yeah. I'm, I'm still way below that, but um, right. It, it, it takes a long time to uh, just get in front of people and, and make right. that, make, you know, convince them of your gospel, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, as far as what I've done with Onyx Capital Investments, if you, uh, anybody that's listening to this podcast, if you hop onto my LinkedIn, it's under Will Smith and you know, I'm there in my football jersey. Um, but if you get up there, you'll, you'll see that I post about four posts a day and they all have the same kind of graphic um, design behind it. You know, the logos there um, and then there's some kind of, inf you know, um, a graphic that, you know, explaining something about real estate or mindset or whatever. And I post that stuff three, four times a day, you know, consistently. And I'm using a software called Hootsuite to kind of schedule it out. And, you know, because I'm doing that every day that I log on to my LinkedIn, I have 10 to 15 new connection requests and I'm not sending out any like and I'm up to 9000 connections now. And it's because I'm doing that stuff consistently day in and day out. And um, yeah, man, this stuff works. It does. It works. It does. It does work. I, 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 I like to hear that. That, um, But, um, but what, you, what you're doing is, you know, you're giving value to people. So I think sometimes we, we put stuff out there and it might be like somebody bragging about a deal or saying, yeah. hey, look what I've done. I look what I've done. But what we're, you're doing is like you're giving people information to say, 
here's how you can improve the thing that you're doing. Or here's something that matters to you. Again, that's, that's what brand is, right? It's the thing that I have, the thing that I know, and the thing that you need. And, yeah. and we, we meet in the middle. So right. I would say, you know, keep doing that. So four times a day, I, I should, I'm going to take that as my benchmark. <laughs> like, I need to do at least four times a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, man. A lot of that stuff you can automate. You know, if I had to just sit down and every day at the beginning of the day try to come up with content to put out there, oh my God, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, all right, man. So what else should we be thinking about around, um, you know, positioning? Because basically that's what a brand is. is you're positioning yourself as an authority in a space. Okay. What else should we be thinking about? So uh, another thing is thinking about how people's lives are changing. So mm. As the world changes, and like we know, this 2020 has been, uh, yeah, it's been a, a, a challenge for a lot of people. People's mindsets are changing a little, and we need to change our, our, our positioning a little bit too. It doesn't mean we change our values, our values are yeah. always going to be the same, but our brand might change a little, our positioning might change a little. The message we're going to have to tweak that just so it resonates where, where people are like, you can't stand still. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's always good to get a temperature check on what's going on in the world. Um, people are going to be more cautious ab about things. Like I, I know people are pulling back right now yeah. with, with investing. And I, like for a long time, I didn't see any properties coming on the market. I didn't see invest. I didn't see uh, syndicators um, pushing any deals, but, yeah. um, but now that, now that's starting to happen again, I'm a little bit more cautious because I'm, I'm like, well, six months from now, I mean like is unemployment right. going to be even worse? So you right. have to, if, if you thought that you had a cautious brand before, if that was like part of like your, your DNA, you yeah. need to like reevaluate that and say, but in 2021, what does that mean? Like right. if, if I'm like a, you know, if I underwrite conservatively, well, what, that, what did that mean in 2017? What, that, what does that mean <laughs> going forward? So right, you need right. to like change that position just so it matches like the reality that people are living. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I definitely agree with you on that because, um, you know, I, I've been underwriting deals and, you know, there's, you know, I'm connected with a lot of people, obviously, and I have people approaching me about, hey, man, let's partner, let's do this deal. I got a deal on my desk, 200 units, 300 units. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm still a little bit hesitant just because you, it's, that's still uncertainty in the marketplace. I mean, you, you don't know, you know, how, how effective this vaccine is going to be, right. how, how long is it going to take to get it out there, you know, when is jobs going to come back, you know, when, it, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, what ifs in the air right now. So, to me, it, if you're underwriting, man, it, it should be very, very conservative. You know, you shouldn't be projecting any um, increases in, in rent. You know, you should be, if you're underwriting, it should be a stable, hey, I, I don't see rent growing at all for the next year or two. Right. You know, that's conservative. Like, I'm not really, and, and the numbers still work, you know. In that scenario, then, okay, yeah, that, then maybe I will. But, yeah, man, it's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. And uh, when, when that happens, though, so when we're in this, this situation, like, branding actually becomes more important because I think of like the, like these good couple of years that we've had for syndicators. And I think it was like, I think it was easy for a lot of people to, to yeah. get going in a deal and have success. Yeah. But when things start turning a little more challenging and uh, you're, you're going to be competing with the same number of people, yeah. but you're going to need to stand out even more. So when it, when it's, when there are tons of, so they're going to be the same amount of investors, but they're going to, excuse me, the same amount of syndicators, but fewer investors because people are cautious. It's right. going to be harder to find enough demand for your deal if, yeah. if you don't stand out in some way. I think like branding gets more important as the world gets more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's what you just said. is so true. <laughs> I'm not going to say any names, but I, uh, there's a guy that put a deal on the contract. And uh, I mean, this was a month or two ago. And, you know, normally those deals are funded within, you know, days, if not, you know, one or two weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. And man, he's still blasting out emails. Hey, we almost there. Like just, you know, 10% away from reaching our goal. Like, I mean, if it's that hard to raise the money for your deal, then, Hey, maybe the deal is not that great. Right. That's right. <laughs> that's so, right. you know, all of that stuff goes into it, man. Um, but yeah, that's, that's very important. Um, just from a, a sports um, perspective, you think about, you know, the game is easy. You know, you, you're winning, you're up, you know, you're, you're relaxed. But when you start losing, like now you got to really dig deep to find a way to win, right? And it's, it's the same way, man. Like, yeah, if, if people are out there doing deals, then, you know, you're going to have to dig a lot deeper to, to find the good ones and find the investors that's willing to partner with you on those deals, right? That's right. Yeah. We're, we're all like, I mean, so the game, as you, as you, as you talked about it there, so the game goes from being a physical game to a mental game, right? When you're, right. when you're down, I mean, like, that's the game that we're playing and in investing here. It's like, like 
we think that we make decisions rationally, but it's not. All our decisions are made um, emotionally, and it's, it goes back to like that part of the brain that controls our emotions and it cr- creates our. De- uh, it allows us to make decisions. Right. Like the emotions and decisions are are, are tied together. Yeah. Now, one hundred percent. Now, I know you probably can you know talk on this for days, um, but I just want to ask you from a marketer's perspective, branding perspective, how do we speak? to an individual to get them to take action when we're talking about, and this is going into sales somewhat, but you know, marketing is everything because then the sales is easy. Uh, but how do you, how do you speak to, you know, someone's fears to make them, well, not make them, but to help them see the light that, Hey man, this is, you know, yeah. a great way to go. I don't, I don't know if we can talk, talk people out of their fears, but I think there's a, there's a different way to go about it. So I don't know if you've heard of the phrase to find your why, like Simon Sinek is this author and he talks about finding your purpose, mm-hmm. find your why. That's what he says. And I, and I, and I sort of like took that in a different way. I said, find somebody else's why. Yeah. So find out the, the motivation that somebody else has your, your customer or your investor in this case, like yeah. find out what their purpose is, find out what their goal is and repeat that back to them. Like, of course you obviously want to be able to help them achieve that goal, but that's right. what it is. You know? So, I mean, it's like, it's like the difference between like a, a, a realtor walking to a house and, and saying to a couple, it's like, here's your new home. It's like, okay, yeah. that's one thing. But like, here's where you're going to raise your family. Like, okay, right. those are two different messages. Right. Like, that's the thing that like, you find the thing that people um, are emotionally concerned about or that, that they're excited about. And yeah. so fear is a very powerful motivator, but, but so yeah. is our purpose, right? So you have to find someone else's purpose and speak to that. That's, that's, what, the, that, that's what empathy is about. It's like right. getting to that point of like understanding what your customer or your investor needs and yeah. being able to solve that problem. That's what we're looking for in life, right? I, like, I, don't, necessarily, I don't need a car. I don't need shoes. I don't need like a, 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 like a house. I need, you know, I need to, a problem solved. I need to like right. be protected from the weather. Yeah. I need a way to get somewhere faster. I don't like, I don't set out and say, geez, I, I need a car. No, I need to get somewhere faster. You know, it's so like we have problems that we solve in life and, and be a problem solver. Um, yeah. First, you have to understand somebody else's like their, their problem or their, their need. Right. 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 Now, like you said, if, if you can empathize with people, then you can get a lot done in this world. Um, That's right. All right, man. So let's, let's go ahead and transition this over to real estate a little bit. Um, what, what kind of deals are you looking for now and why do you want those kind of deals? All right. So I already told you, I'm not looking for anything in the Northeast. Although I did look at something on Tuesday. <laughs> right. <laughs> around here. I have to like, I have to like remind myself, no, 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 that's not the mission. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I am looking for, um, uh, some passive deals. So some deals where I can be involved passively, but where I can also learn something. So I'm looking for opportunities where these are, might be syndicators who are competent. They know what they're doing. Yeah. but they're not huge. They're not so big that they don't care about me. I'm a, right. I'm a number. So I'm looking for deals that, that um, I can um, get more than just a return. I need a little bit of education, but yeah. um, I'm, I'm also looking for deals in areas where people are moving to. So now that like there's so much remote work yeah, and it's like, is this going to stay this way? Maybe it does. Right. And so I'm looking at places that are that, be going to be attractive to um, remote workers. Professionals have good jobs who yeah. haven't lost them. <laughs> jobs are everything. We right, haven't lost right. them, but they're, they're thinking, Hey, I don't necessarily need to live um, in Atlanta. I can right. live 45 minutes away or I can live an hour away. That's where I'm starting to look. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not, yeah. Like, and this isn't my, like, I didn't come up with some secret here. I mean, like, there are people who are so far ahead of me on this, but like, that, yeah. that's what I've come to. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Um, and you know, something I want to talk about on Monday on my Monday motivation is uh, it's okay to pivot. Um, you know, you think about, like you said, Boston, man, it's, it's a great market. Don't get me wrong, but it's hard to scale in a market like that. It's cost, it, you know, the cost is so high there. Um, whereas you can, like, you, you may be able to buy 10, 10 units up there in Boston for, it might cost you $2 million to get 10 units, depending on where you're at. But, you know, $2 million down here in Greenville, man, you're going to buy about 60, 70 units here in Greenville, North Carolina. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. your, your dollar goes further. And then, like you said, you know, really understanding, the um the jobs in the marketplace you know right. is there is there it demand all comes down there? to that you can't right. you, you can't have a successful real estate business without people to live there and those people can't live there without a job 100 <laughs> percent. you know people are going to always follow jobs so if, if the market has jobs then it's a pretty pretty good chance that, that market's going to be solid and obviously you know you want to have a a market where 
you know, it's, it's pushing for, it's not stagnant. You know, the, right. the local government is really trying to push the initiative to bring people in. So um, mm-hmm. all of that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, that's a good deal, man. Uh, now you say you had a property that's, uh, that you have now. How, how big is the multifamily property that you have now? The, it's six units. Yeah. So the six units, man, let's, let's talk about it. How did you find that deal? So I had been looking for a while and I, I was working with a broker and this is a property that came on the market. Um, it's almost, it's a year and a half that I've had it. It came on the market. It was like really overpriced. Um, yeah. It came down a bit. And I said to my broker, I said, let's make an offer on this. And he said, no, it's still overpriced. And I said, well, let's put in a, like, like where, where's the, <laughs> uh, at what price was it not over, right, overpriced? Right. So I, and I still, we went in higher than he, than he recommended, but I think here, I, I, I think, I, I hope he's not listening, but I, I think I kind of outsmarted my own broker. Cause I, I did some research yeah. on the rents in the area. Yeah. Um, and I said, these things are way undervalued by right. like 30%. And, and then I, I found out a little bit more about the people living in the building. It's not a huge building, only six, right. six units. People have been living there for 20 years. And I said wow. to myself, these are good people. They, have, they got, it seem like they have good jobs. I bet I can raise rents to market without losing a single person. And yep. th- that's exactly what happened. So wow. this building that on, on paper at first, which seemed like it wasn't a good deal. Yeah. Like six months in when I'm able to start moving rents up. And now a year and a half later, I'm, it's like, it's like a, a 22% ROI on this. It's a small wow. building. So again, yeah. it's not uh, huge. That's, that's still impressive though. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, a- absolutely, man. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So are you planning to uh, hold on to that or are you going to, you know, go ahead and sell it and, and roll that money into a bigger, bigger property? I, I would like to hold on to this one for at least a few more years, like in the area outside of Boston. So this is like, let's say it's like an hour outside of Boston. I don't see there being much appreciation. I've, I've forced some appreciation by yeah. rent, raising rents and I made a couple of improvements, but I, I don't see, I'd be, I'd be making like a, a ton of money back. And so it wouldn't be worth right. it. It's not like I'm going to say, look, now I, now I can go, I, I've got a big hammer to go swinging with. I don't have like, I don't have a million dollars now. I have like a little bit more than what I started right, with, right, right. but I do enjoy the cash flow. Yeah, yeah, no, cash flow is everything. Ca- cash flow is king. <laughs> so if you don't have cash flow, you don't have anything. Right. Oh, that was a nice little round there. <laughs> All right, man. So um, let's let's go to the lightning round. Um, I got about five questions for you, man. Maybe six. Okay. All right. So, what's the best advice you ever been given? Wow, the best advice I was ever given was um, by my mother, who told me to buy houses when I was twenty five or twenty six, and it took me a little while to to come around to it. <laughs> She's yeah. like, "Buy it now," and I was like, "Okay." Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Um, what's the best book you've read this year? Uh, it's called um, Further Faster by a guy, Bill Flynn. And so Bill Flynn, this book, Further Faster, it just helps you understand like which things work and yeah. which things will get you to your goal quicker. So there's tons of stuff we have to do in, in a day. Yeah. Focus on the things that will make the most traction or like the, the things that are fuel for your goals. Right. No, that, that sounds like a great book. Definitely going to check that out. Um, what are some rituals just you've created that's making you a better investor or person in general? Uh Oh, Willie, I think I lost you there. I'm are sorry. You? I lost you there for a second. All right. I'm back. Um, I said, uh, what are some rituals that you have created that's making you a better person or general, Oh, a person or in general? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's like understanding people's uh, capabilities, you, you know, and I, I've become, I was never a good delegator, but I've become a better delegator by understanding what people are good at and helping them be better. Like, so I used to like, ha- like I was a bad delegator and when I would delegate, I would hand off work to people without giving them the instructions. To, like I need to give people, I've learned, I have to give people a blueprint to yeah. get to the goal that I want them to get to. I can't, um, uh, I just can't allow people. I can't imagine that they're going to get there themselves. They need my help. Right. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, what's one thing you're doing right now to help you improve your business? Talking, talking to people like, you know, COVID came and like a lot of things like shut down. We can't have like the meetups in person anymore. Got to yep. keep talking to people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you can give your younger self one tip in regards to investing, what would that be? take, take more risks. I've, I've played it safe way too long. And I'm like, yeah, when I was younger and I didn't have a family and a house and a mortgage and all that, I yeah. should have been taking more risks. Absolutely. 100%. Business what? risks, not other not <laughs> <safety risks. laughs> Right, right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, last question, man. 
What's the worst job you ever had? Oh, the worst job I ever had. Um, I uh, used to, when I was in high school, I worked at, <laughs> at this, uh, this nursery, this, like where they had trees and stuff. They, yeah. you know, and um, they, they, there was this one spot out in the, the, in the yard there, they called the desert. And I had to go out there and like stack up like these wooden pallets that weighed as much as I did. And like, yeah. it was awful because like the kid who was my boss was like some kid who went to my high school. And like, I stacked up this massive pile one day and he comes over after like, it took me like an hour. He's like, oh, I didn't mean there. I mean over there. And he's like, <laughs> like literally five oh, feet away. And he was just doing that to mess with wow. me. But it, wow. it taught me, you know, like, like the, I guess it'd be nicer to people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. sure, man. Good deal. Well, Stace, man, that's the end of the show. Um, tell my listeners, how can they get in touch with you? Oh, yeah. So you can check out our, our website. Our agency is called Trust Deep. So trustdeepagency.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. My name is Stace, Stace Casaria. I, so my LinkedIn thing is like, you know, linkedin.com slash Stace. I mean, it's like it's just five letters. So right. um but you can you can um, go to the show notes. I bet that there'll be some some information there, or just yeah. check out our website, um, trustdeepagency.com. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, I got me a notepad full of notes here. Yeah. Um, you added a ton of value to my listeners, man. We we really appreciate it. Yeah. The last thing I would say, and this is something that you started the show with, is leave a review for this show. So like these, like the reviews, I don't know if people understand how powerful they are to help other people find this show. This show and any show you listen to that you like, leave a review. It's like, it's going to take you like, like you, you've gotten so much like value out of listening to this show. Spend like 30 seconds and giving some back. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for listening to the Generational Wealth Through Commercial Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by Onyx Capital Investments. Onyx Capital Investments works with investors nationwide to invest in income-producing real estate in emerging markets. Connect online at www.onyxcapitalinvestments.com to learn more about what we are doing. If we have added value to your life, please leave us a review.